Oh, hello everyone, Omar is here, this time with a uh, Windows XP video. From the NBC 10 Money Watchers tonight, Windows XP users, you'll be interested in this. Mm -hmm. After 12 years, Microsoft is stopping its support of the well-known computer operating system. Yeah, we know a lot of you folks probably use it, and while you can still use Windows hmm. XP... There are what if we still want to use Windows XP exactly 10 years later after support ended? What can go wrong if we install it on modern hardware like a Socket 1700 motherboard, a 13th gen Intel Core i3 CPU, and a M.2 NVMe SSD? Well, uh, in this case, at least two things can go wrong. First, if you are thinking that the motherboard is too new, then you are probably right. Newer motherboards are using newer ACPI revisions, and Windows XP won't understand what's going on, and it will halt the installation. In this case, we have the option to disable ACPI by pressing F7 during the setup, or else we'll uh, end up with this screen telling us, uh, guess what, to disable ACPI. Because our configuration is not fully compliant. Instead of F7, we can press F5, and uh, we can choose to run XP in a standard PC configuration, single CPU mode, or we can pick uh, MPS multiprocessor PC, and uh, this way we can have a multi CPU support. With one condition, our motherboard must be MPS compliant. Although this is a standard from 1995, Intel motherboards are still offering MPS support, so we can install not only Windows XP with uh, multiprocessor support, but also Windows 2K or even Windows NT. This is Windows XP running through MPS with four CPUs available. Without ACPI, there is no hyper-trading support, and among other power-related features, a soft shutdown won't work, so we have to shut down our computer manually. Anyway, if XP is okay with our ACPI configuration, or if we choose to install it without ACPI, next we have to bypass the most common blue screen in the history of Windows. Let's call it uh, 007B because it has license to shut down our entire installation if Windows can't uh, initialize our hard drive. Windows XP is expecting an IDV drive or some uh, known as SCSI devices from the late 90s and early 2000s. For everything else, we must provide drivers. In practice, this wasn't a big deal. While uh, SATA drives were taking over during the peak of Windows XP, because uh, you could make a SATA drive to work in ID mode, and this was perfectly fine for Windows XP. The problem is that newer motherboards don't offer this option anymore. Well, uh, today we can get away without using the ID mode or Windows XP compatible disk hardware if we use the right installation disk and a tool called Patch Integrator. This tool will integrate community-made patches and, in the end, it will cook a custom Windows XP ISO, just like this one we are about to create right now. Let's get started. So, what do we need for this installation? First of all, we need SATA, HCI and NVMe support. We definitely want an updated ACPI driver or else we won't get very far with installation. Also, let's add to the mix Intel USB 3 driver since we are using an Intel uh, chipset. There are more NVMe drivers available, but we will stick with something more standard like the one uh, released by Microsoft. Uh, Windows has NVMe native support since Windows 8.1, but through later updates, Microsoft released a NVMe driver for Windows 7. And uh, this uh, very driver was backported to Windows XP. Well, uh, that's it. Now we have a custom CD with an updated Windows XP Service Pack 3, which should get along with SATA, ACI, NVMe, and Intel USB 3 chipsets. And more importantly, also knows how to deal with the newer ACPI revisions. So uh, let's burn this ISO image and install Windows XP. With this uh, custom-made uh, installation CD, we should uh, have no ACPI issues. It's not the first time when I uh, use a patched ACPI driver, but it's the first time when I install uh, XP on NVMe SSD on a Socket 1700 motherboard, so I don't know.
the first part of the installation works as uh, expected. At this uh, time, uh, either we get the 00007B blue screen, or we get the welcome to setup screen, which means that our fixed uh, drive is recognized. Setup is starting windows. Well, what do you know? Welcome to setup. Of course, we want to press enter and see if our NVMe driver is in charge, and uh, definitely is if we see store NVMe listed in the screen. So far, looks like it's uh, 2003 again. We start the installation, our drive is recognized as this should be totally normal, and we also have a FAT32 partition with Windows 98 on it because it's 20. What? What year? But never mind. We're gonna format this partition also FAT32 so it can be used from Windows 98. And later, the rest of the drive can be used with uh, Windows 10 in a triple boot setup. Now it's only a matter of time to finish the installation. The problems that can arise won't be related to hardware, but to our installation files. We might get some missing file error messages. This is the Windows XP Integral Edition and has lots of extra third-party software to be installed. We can skip this part if we want to, but it will save us a lot of time if we choose not to. At the end, the installation is set to automatically restart. And there you have it, Windows XP Service Pack 3 running on almost the latest generation Intel desktop CPU using an uh, NVMe drive. Not everything is so new, we have uh, also this uh, 2006 NVIDIA GeForce 7900GS which is a great pick in a multi-boot setup with Windows 98. Let's install some drivers and then uh, take a quick tour of Windows XP in full HD. Some sound would be nice too. This motherboard has a uh, classic PCI slot, so I'm using it with an Advanced Logic uh, PCI sound card. By the way, Advanced Logic was bought by Realtek. And if you ever wonder why your onboard card is called ALC, well, AL comes from advanced logic and see I don't know maybe from a codec and uh, back to Windows in full HD meanwhile I connected a uh, SATA drive but first let's test our NVMe drive using a crystal disk mark this is a mid-range OEM NVMe from uh, Samsung and if we check it online we get roughly the same uh, results so I guess that our uh, standard NVMe driver from Microsoft is doing uh, a good job. Now let's check our SanDisk SATA 3 SSD drive. Well, it looks like we are getting the exact advertised speeds. Next, let's uh, check this uh, Kingston uh, USB 3.2 external SSD. So far, I didn't even check the USB ports if they work. It sounds like they working uh, just fine. Found new hardware, standard USB attached SCSI mass storage device. Okay, now let's see what reading speeds do we get. Hmm, so far uh, not great, uh, not terrible either. This drive can uh, go up to 1000 megabytes per second. I know for sure, but I guess this is good enough. Now let's take a quick look at our uh, hardware using the latest hardware info. This motherboard has an updated uh, BIOS using a 14 gen CPU. It's only a matter of uh, swapping the CPU. Under ACPI section, there are listed many ACPI devices. Most of them will be correctly recognized by Windows XP. By the way, let's make a quick tour of our hardware using Device Manager. Things are looking good. We have NVMe, SATA 3 and USB 3 devices listed. 
there are a few unknown ACPI devices and some onboard uh, devices that are still waiting for drivers. The sound card should work. If not, we still can get sound through HDMI. The gigabit networking card, I know for sure, won't work, so we have to find something else. Overall, uh, I think we can't complain. After all, uh, Windows XP was launched in 2001. How about uh, going online? Well, uh, I think this is the easiest part. We can use uh, MyPal browser packed with this integral edition. MyPal is based on Firefox and it will get along with YouTube just fine. I mean, uh, getting on YouTube is the greatest achievement for a browser running on some older operating system. Or we can use something uh, fancier like Supermium, which is based on Chromium engine. It uh, literally takes only three clicks to install it and then you can get online. Now it's time to end the video. What can I say? Uh, Windows XP is quite amazing. I can't think of any other operating system getting this level of support from the community. This particular installation was easy to perform since I used a uh, PS2 mouse and keyboard and a SATA drive. I have to check if the USB 3 controller gets recognized during the setup, so we can use the USB mouse and keyboard. I'll uh, put this info into the description. Let's end with a new benchmark from the creators of uh, Crystal Disk Mark and Disk Info. It's called uh, Crystal Mark Retro. I actually downloaded it accidentally when I was trying to get Crystal Disk Mark. It's quite new, like a month old. And I really like those Athlon XP CPUs during the video benchmark. Thanks for watching, see you next time.